Christ said, I don't condemn you for being in the sin that you're in. But there's a stipulation. Read. Go. He said, go about your business now and do what? And sin no more. And do what? And sin no more. That's called repentance. So you find out that you're in sin. You find out that wearing pants is unlawful. You find out that eating shrimp, crab, pork, and lobster is unlawful. Christ is telling you, okay, sin no more. That's the purpose of grace. That's the mercy that Christ brought. You understand? So, um, you asked the question, right? You asked the question. You said, um, I'm in so much sin, I, I feel like I broke all these laws, right? Am I going to go to hell because you did it, right? What you got to understand is that we all sin, right? I want you to get Sirach. No, get John chapter 8. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you a story in the Bible, right? John chapter 8, verse 4. Read the verse 11. We're going to show you something because what, what's the purpose of Jesus Christ coming? Why did Christ come down? Bro, what's your name? Tristan. Why, why, why did Jesus Christ come down? You don't know, right? Why did Jesus Christ come? To save us from what? From our sins, right? To give us grace and mercy. From what? From God's judgment. Get John 8, verse 4. This is the book of John, chapter 8, and verse 4. You know? They say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery. Right, so the scribes and Pharisees came and they found a woman that was taken in adultery. She was committing adultery. She was sleeping with another man against her husband. Is that a sin? Right, she was in sin. Read. In the very act. Uh -huh. She caught her in the act. That means they caught her sleeping with this man. So what's the judgment for, for, for a woman committing adultery under, under Moses' laws? She gets put to death. She gets killed. Right? Read. Verse 12. Mm -hmm. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. Right. So Moses commanded us in the law. Our laws in the Bible says, look, if you catch somebody committing adultery, they get put to death. They, they die off that thing. You understand? Read. But what say is thou? Uh -huh. So what do you say, Christ? They ask the Christ, well, what do you say about that? Read. Verse 6. This they said, tempting him. They said that tempting Christ. You understand? They're trying to catch Christ up in his words. They're trying to see what Christ really is going to sell, what's going, what Christ is going to explain to them. Read. That they might have to accuse him. Mm -hmm. But Jesus stood down. Stop, excuse me. Jesus stood down. Uh -huh. And with his finger. Vote on the ground. So Christ was, Christ, they, he knew, Christ knew that these dudes was trying to play him, was trying to mess with him. So he just stood on the ground, was just, was just drawn on the ground. Read. As though he heard them not. Acting as if he did not hear what they said because they brought the adulterous woman there seeing if Christ was going to say, put her to death. Kill her because she committed adultery. Right? Read. Verse 7. Uh -huh. So when they continued asking him. They kept asking him while he was ignoring them, drawn on the ground. Right? Read. He lifted up himself. Uh -huh. So now Christ lifted up himself. Looking at him. Read. And said unto him, uh -huh. He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. So Christ is telling them, Any one of you that is without sin, you will be allowed to go ahead and start stoning this woman. He said, If you want to kill this woman for committing adultery, he who is without sin cast that first stone, meaning condemn this woman to death. Read. Verse 8. And again, he stooped down. Then he went right back down. Go ahead. And wrote on the ground. They started writing on the ground again, ignoring him. Read. Verse 9. And they which heard it, being convinced, I mean, convicted by their own co conscience. Uh-huh. Without one by one, beginning at the eldest. Right. So, after he said that, then ignored him. He said, he was without sin. You cast the first stone. And he went back writing on the ground. And then... They started thinking. They was convicted. Why? Why were they convicted? Why was their conscience messing with them then? Because they was in sin as well, right? They knew that they either committed adultery or was eating shrimp, crab, pork, and lobster or hated their brother. They was doing some kind of sin. So they was like, damn. So they all got up from the eldest first to the youngest. Like, man, I got to get out of here. I'm not going to stone this woman. Read. Even unto the last. Read. And Jesus was left alone. So Christ was left alone. Read. And the woman standing in the midst. So the woman was standing in the midst. So now it's just Christ and that woman that they caught committing adultery, breaking God's laws, right? Which we all are in the midst of, right? 
Read. Verse 10. When Jesus had lifted up himself mm -hmm. and saw none but the woman. So when Christ got up now, after ignoring the men, he realized they were gone, but he all he saw was that woman. Put yourself in that woman's shoes now. All Christ saw was you, sis, or you, bro, or you, sis. Right? Read. He said unto the woman. Watch what Christ says unto the woman. Read. Woman. Why are those dying accusers? He said, where are the men now that was trying to put you to death because they caught you in sin? Read. Hath no man condemned thee? Has no man condemned thee? Because these men were trying to condemn her. Right? So he was like, well, where are they at? Read. Verse 11. Well, here's the point. She said, no man, Lord. She said, no man's here to kill me, Christ. Read. And Jesus said unto her, uh -huh. neither do I condemn thee. Christ said, I don't condemn you for being in the sin that you're in. But there's a stipulation. Read. Go. He said, go about your business now and do what? And sin no more. And do what? And sin no more. That's called repentance. So you find out that you're in sin. You find out that wearing pants is unlawful. You find out that eating shrimp, crab, pork, and lobster is unlawful. Christ is telling you, okay, sin no more. That's the purpose of grace. That's the mercy that Christ brought. You understand? He, he knows that we all, in every single one of us here was in the midst of some kind of wicked sin, some crazy sin. We all ate shrimp, crab, pork, and lobster. You understand that? Our women all wore pants. We all committed adultery, fornication, smoked weed, did all these things. But once we found out what Christ was about, read verse 11 again. Verse 11, she said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, uh -huh. neither do I condemn thee. Christ does not condemn us for being in the midst of sin. We'll get condemned when Christ returns and we've never repented. We've never changed our ways. You understand? So you ask where you go when you die. Guess what? If you die in the midst of your sins, you're going to die forever. You're not going to make it. You understand? But read on. Go and sin no more. It says go and sin no more. That's the purpose of grace. We get one more? Let's deal with grace real quick because this is the purpose of grace. Get chapter 6, verse 1, Romans 6 and 1, then Titus 2. Bring it out. This is the purpose of grace. We all have grace now. And all praises to the Most High. Y'all should be ecstatic to find out that you are the children of the Most High God. Right, right. Shouldn't be worried about the other nations, any other people, because they don't give a damn about us. Right. Did right. they care about us when they drove us over here on slave ships? When they, when they rode us over here on slave ships on the boats? Yeah. When our backs was getting beat? When our women was getting raped? When our men was getting pulled apart? Was getting murdered? Did they, care? Did they care that we fill up the prison houses now? No, they create a society and a system set up to keep us in the prison, and they build more prisons. They're building more prisons than schools. Right. Yeah. Do they care about our plight? But we worried about if God loves them. Who loves us should be what you're worried about. Because right now, we on a planet right now, we're in a society and a system right now where nobody loves us, but God loves you. Right. That's what you should be worried about, and turn to him, his grace. It's the book of Romans, chapter 6, and verse 1. Read. Yeah. What shall we say then? Uh -huh. Shall we continue in sin? Shall we continue to sin, go against God's laws, statutes, and commandments that the officer and that we bring it out to our people today? Read. That grace may abound. Because we have grace from Jesus Christ. Christ just saved the woman from being stoned. You understand? Because she was in the midst of adultery. He told her to sin no more, meaning don't continue in that sin. This is why I'm here. Read. God forbid! This is hell no! Do not continue in your sin. Read. How shall we that are dead to sin uh -huh. live any longer therein? How shall we that are dead to sins? We understand what sin is. So we kill off the old man and the old woman. How shall we remain in that same sin? Knowing that the end, if we're caught up in our sin, is death. The purpose of Christ is to teach us grace. Read. Chapter 2 and 11. Titus. Is it grace 2 and 11? Titus, chapter 2 and verse 11. Go ahead. For the grace of God that brings salvation hath appeared to all men. You should be worried about what brings you salvation. You should be worried about what brings you eternal life, not what you're going to do when you die because you're living in, in sin. We should be worried about the grace and the mercy that Christ came to teach us and to give us for being in sin. That's Read. right. Teaching us, teaching us the grace, the purpose of Christ, the grace and the mercy that Christ came is to teach us what? That denying ungodliness. To deny an ungodly, living an ungodly life. You understand? 
Living an ungodly life, meaning you're not following God's laws, statutes, and commandments. So we must deny that thing. Read. And worldly lust. And worldly lust. Because it's a lust. Listen, sin is pleasurable. The Bible says that. So it's, it's, it's easy for us to do the things that we want to do. But the fight is to do the things that we're commanded to do that's going to make us that godly person that we're ordained to be. We are ordained to be gods on this earth here. That's right. We can do it. Christ came to show us that a person in the flesh can live godly on this earth. They don't have to commit fornication. Our women don't have to wear pants. They don't have to dress immodestly. Our men don't have to sleep with every single woman, make babies, and not take care of them. Right up. We don't have to live like that. We don't have to eat shrimp, fat, pork, and lobster. There's other alternatives. There's godly alternatives. That's right. You understand? Read. We should live soberly. We should live soberly. Go ahead. Righteously. Righteously. What is righteousness? To walk righteously is... Get it real quick. And then we'll finish it. Deuteronomy, chapter 6, and verse 25. He said we shall live righteously, right? Read. And it shall, and it shall be our righteousness. It shall be our righteousness. The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans' righteousness. No one else's. It should be our righteousness to do what? If we observe to do all these commandments, if we observe to do all the laws that are being brought to us before the Lord our God, before our God that's watching down on us. Go back. Go back. Titus 2, 11, read from the top. Titus chapter 2, verse 11. Go ahead. For the grace of God that brings salvation hath appeared to all men. So the grace of God that brings salvation, it appeared to all men. We're under that grace now. And that mercy period that we have now to get ourselves together. Read. Teaching us. It's supposed to teach us. Jesus Christ, the black Messiah, is supposed to teach us what? That denying ungodliness. We're to deny living an ungodly life. Read. And worldly lust. And deny ourselves the worldly lust. The lust of this world here. Read. We should live soberly. We should live soberly. Righteously. According to God's laws. And godly. And godly. Read. In this present world, in this present wicked world that has all the temptations in life. You turn on the TV, you see wickedness. You walk out your house, you see wickedness. You go to the grocery store, you see wickedness. This entire world is filled with temptations. Our job is to live soberly in this world and righteously in this world and fight off the flesh. You know what I'm saying? So you ask your question. You ask, oh, damn, I'm doing all, committing all this sin. I feel like I broke all these laws. What's going to happen to me? What's going on with hell? Christ tells you to sin no more. Just turn your feet from your, from your sins. And it's a battle. It's a struggle. You're not going to get it perfect. You understand? Ain't none of us up here walking perfectly now, but we're in the fight. You understand? We're striving to be that perfect person. We're killing off that old man and woman daily. That's what we want. That's what Christ wants y'all to do. Right. It's it to up. get in the fight. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth.
So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.